In our contribution on surface-only ferrofluids, we present a novel approach to simulate the free surface flow of an incompressible, inviscid, linearly magnetizable fluid by only using the information on the surface. We incorporate the relevant effects caused by magnetism, surface tension, and gravity as illustrated in the upcoming scenes. The fluid's free surface is represented by a triangle mesh. The magnetic scalar potential is computed as the integral of the external magnetic field. For a given cylindrical magnet located below the fluid, the magnetic field lines are shown here. The magnetic scalar potential is calculated on each vertex. A boundary integral equation is solved, and the magnetic scalar potential is transformed into double layer charges on the surface. Based on the double layer charges, the negative magnetic pressure on the surface is calculated. In another step, surface tension is taken into account, and also the influence of the gravity potential. Adding these parts together, we obtain the total pressure on the boundary. And finally, apply the negative gradient to the velocity field driving the fluid simulation. We employ an improved Hemholtz decomposition projecting the velocity field onto a divergence-free and a curl-free manifold. Previous work employed a partial Hemholtz decomposition in which the curl is not handled, and a less accurate quadrature rule for the boundary integral is used. Our analytical integration of the boundary integral ensures high-quality results in all kinds of damping setups. The Hemholtz decomposition employed in previous work leads to noisy simulations, as it can be observed here. Even if analytical integration is employed, the simulation is still noisy since the curl is not taken into account. Previous work uses a co-location boundary element method to solve the pressure so that the energy gets lost very quickly. We employ a Galerkin boundary element method, resulting in a superior energy preservation. We also test a different method for the magnetic field problem, which is called a single-layer potential formulation. Compared to the double-layer potential formulation in our work, more noise can be observed. We systematically measure surface patterns for different surface tension and magnetic field strengths. A stronger magnetic field results in a larger amplitude, while stronger surface tension increases the wavelength. The characteristic pattern only forms if the magnetic field exceeds the critical field strengths. We compare simulations with different mesh resolutions. Appropriate quality can naturally only be achieved if the triangles are sufficiently small to capture the characteristic geometry of the spikes. In this scene, a magnet approaches the fluid, leading to the formation of spikes. As demonstrated here, the orientation of the magnet is relevant. We position the fluid between two thin glass layers and apply a magnetic field perpendicular to the surface. A nonlinear labyrinth pattern develops as we increase the magnetic field strength. This pattern was observed in previous experimental studies. A photorealistic rendering of the scene is presented here. In this scene, we employ two electromagnets, one at the top and another one at the bottom controlling the movement of the fluid. First, we increase the strength of the upper magnet, attracting the fluid to the top. Then, we increase the strength of the lower magnet while gradually reducing the strength of the upper magnet so that the fluid starts to be attracted to the bottom. Here, we present a photorealistic rendering of the scene. Thank you for your interest in our work and watching this video. The corresponding publication and supplemental material, as well as more information about the authors and our research, can be found on our website, www.computationalsciences.org.